Kia ora tātou. Welcome along everyone to our presentation on Araranga Matihiko. I'm going to be talking about a lot about student engagement digital technologies and how they can interact in the museums today. Uh, kia ora tātou. Ko Castlebrook tuku waka, ko Aoraki tuku manga, ko Rakaa tuku awa, ko Te Whāna o Aotearoa tuku iwi, no Rakaa o. Ko Tara Fagan taku ingoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora, I'm Tara Fagan. I am originally from Christchurch but have been living in Wellington for many years. Three gorgeous children, they're all uh, adults now. That's the one photo that they let me show of them. Um, I spent a lot of time living around New Zealand and some time living in Western Samoa and after having children became a teacher. So I'm an early childhood teacher by trade um, and I've been working in the museum now for uh, coming up three years and really fortunate to be involved in the Raranga Matehiko programme that I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, it's something very special to my heart and, um, and the partnership that we've built up between our four museums as well. So the programme came about, the Ministry of Education, you may have heard, have um, talked about uh, putting digital technologies into the New Zealand curriculum. So they've updated the technology component of the New Zealand curriculum and uh, they've updated Hangaro for the Marautanga. And it's looking at a focus on digital technologies and it's using digital technologies to create. So it's not about sitting and everybody becoming coders, but it's actually using digital technologies in a way to be able to tell stories, to be able to create and understand the world in which our young people are coming up into. So just over two years ago, the Ministry of Education tended for groups to look to see who wanted to deliver this work to help support teachers in their development and students having access to rich digital technologies. Te Papa tended for the bid and we were successful. We were, uh, there were 22 organisations bid for this, traditionally um, professional learning providers, and we were accepted to deliver the programme. And we deliver it in partnership with our four museums up there. We've got Auckland Museum who are here today, MTG, Hawke's Bay and Waitangi Museum. And between the four of us, we've developed a strong partnership in working with students in our local community to be able to have them access the museum in new ways and what they've used, but also using digital technologies to be able to create and make and tell their own stories. Storytelling is really important in our programme. We wanted to be able to really connect the museum with the work that we're doing in terms of digital technology use. So our programme not only provides students with access to digital technologies, but it's about them using it to tell the stories that matter to them, to their community and to themselves on a national level. We work with Decile 1 to 3 students, and they tend to be the students who don't visit our museum, or certainly not in the case of our four partner museums. So we fund everything that's involved in the programme, from the buses that pick the students up, um, to the lunches that are served in each location so that the students have food to eat. Um, and we work with them over a 16 hour period. Um, and I'll get into some student work a little bit later on, but I thought I'd start with how the program actually works. So you can see here, um, before the students come in, we work with their teachers. They come in and have a teacher-only day and they get to explore the new curriculum content. They get to explore the way in which they can use the museums to enrich their, their classroom content. And they get to explore with some of the digital technologies that their students will be using. Then we bring their class in and they have two consecutive days with us in the museum. So classes are involved with us for a three year period. So they come in for two days in the first year and one day in the second and third years. Our team then goes out and takes the technologies to work out with them in the classroom. So they spend about four hours out in the classroom with the students finishing off projects and enriching the experience. So over a 10 week term, everyone has about 16 hours of contact, uh, or the students have 16 hours of contact with the facilitators. We have two facilitators. We always have at least one Māori medium in each region so that we can deliver to Māori medium students as well as Māori students in English medium settings. They always co-facilitate and they co-design their programme. And they work really closely with the teachers to find out what the inquiry topic is happening in the classroom and then they link it into uh, what they can use on the museum experiences in the Tonga to be able to make that much richer. So they're building on existing knowledge of students and using the museum in new ways. And we've had many um, 
students report or teachers report on students' behalf how many of them have never been into the city before. So even 15 minutes from Wellington, students have never been into the city. They, some haven't been on a bus. And some lunchtimes we have students riding up and down the lifts from level one to six because they've never been in an elevator before. So while this is a programme about um, digital technologies, it's becoming much more. It's about connecting our young people with the museums and the way in which they can use it with rich social experiences and using the digital technologies. So this is our wonderful team. We work very virtually. We generally only get together about once a year. This was our team who in Waitangi last year. There are about 14 of us that work throughout the country on this project. Um, and so because we can't get face to face, digital plays a big role in the way that we communicate. I really think that our team across the four museums is very strong and we work really hard at that. So we, you know, have virtual hui, we can't get round for Friday drinks, so we have virtual drinks at the end of term and we all sit round our screens and, and just do what we would do if we were normally face to face. But it's a really important part of our team that we are connected as much as we can be. Last year, we worked with 3,841 students across the four sites. We worked with over 200 teachers and over 321 whānau helpers. Everyone who comes to our program is a learner and everyone who comes is a teacher. So it becomes an even playing field. For many of our teachers, using technologies is something new that they haven't been exposed to before. So they're learning alongside their students. And in some cases, their students have more knowledge than the teacher does themselves. So it's just levelling that out and making everyone feel welcome when they come along, that actually it's OK to be a learner, even if you are the teacher. And for many of our whānau helpers, they're seeing what their students or their ch our children are learning about. And some of them are then taking that and replicating in their own lives to improve their own something that they're doing for whānau. Sometimes, though, we have to be careful because the whānau helpers get quite excited when the virtual reality gear comes out, or the robots, and they push the students out of the way to be able to, to use it. But everyone has to be active, and we really stress that, particularly um, for whānau, so they don't think it's their time to go off and have a coffee break, that actually they're here to work and learn alongside the students as well. But working with 3,841 students last year, doesn't really show the amount of work that we did. So we are now reporting everything in learning hours. So you take the 3,800 students, but with 16 hours face-to-face -face contact for most of them, it's actually over 43,000 learning hours. Um, so that's something that I've just popped in here for, because for those of you in museums or, or that have LEOTC contracts, it might be something that you start want to record um, in terms of your reporting as well. We've been working with the Ministry of Education to not only show student numbers but also record the learning hours because that shows the depth of learning that these students are getting. They're not just getting a one hour great experience and there's nothing wrong with one hour, but actually they're getting deep learning that's really impacting for them in the classroom. The museum aspect is key. So we do have digital technologies as a focus, that's what our contract is, but we couldn't do it without drawing on the relationships and the expertise that we have within our museums. Often, even if we don't have curators or collection specialists or anyone like that on hand to help, we draw heavily on the exhibitions and our facilitators have worked with the team behind the scenes to help set up the programme so we can draw on the very best of what the museum has to offer. And I'm just going to play the short video. There's no sound with it, so I'll just talk over it. So you, you can see a little bit about what the programme looks, looks like in action. So you can see that the kids are learning about green screening and animation there. Um, they're learning how to control the technologies, but they're linking it back to their own class inquiry. So you can see there there's one of the pieces of art that's collections online and that they can bring in and work with, and they can use that to tell their story about identity. While they're learning through this program, they're learning about things like usage rights and copyright and what they can and can't do and what safe sharing looks like. So all that good digital citizen, digital fluency skill, at the same time they're learning about digital technology and museum access. Reading and writing still happens. We haven't, you know, thrown out the pencil and pen with um, the technology. That's still used and students have the choice of what they want to use. In the programme, they get a chance to experience a range of digital technologies and when they come back in after their museum experience to focus in on what it is that they want to learn about, 
they choose this, the technology that suits best for them. Most of the time it's digital tech, but for some of our students it might be pen and paper and card and creating, and that's absolutely fine because they've got the choice of what they want to be able to use. So you can just see there part of our museum experience and the small group size that works. Because we have two facilitators, it means that we've got the luxury of being able to work with small groups um, and really spend time getting to know the students. And that's important because for a lot of these learners, they've come from a place where the school system doesn't always suit their needs. They have come through um, a system that doesn't support the way they learn best and they're coming into what we call an education innovative learning environment where they've got two facilitators, they can make the space their own and they can use the equipment in the, the way that works best for them. And so having the two facilitators works well. And as you just saw with the moonwalk, encouraging the students to make the museum their own as much as we can within the constraints of our, our own spaces, but enabling them to do that so that they can return and return. Um, we know that in the likes of Waitangi and Hawke's Bay, our smaller museums that can track this much more easily, we're finding that students are returning with their families at the weekends and that's something that hasn't happened much before or that it's their first visit for the families and the students return sharing their knowledge and sharing it with their families as they go, um, as they tour through, through the museum. Evaluation has been a key part of the work that we've done. And right from the beginning of the program, we've engaged um, external evaluators to look at the work that we're doing. We, we meet the needs of our contract, which is around digital technologies learning, so I haven't put that up there. But these are some of the other things that we found. We found that teachers are gaining new ideas for teaching and learning through watching our facilitators and being part of the, the experience. When our facilitators go back into the classroom, they can often hear the teachers using some of the strategies that we've used. And it gives teachers a chance to refresh that outside of their classroom and they're exposed to new ideas and practices. Students um, are becoming more aware of a range of new potential of careers and possibilities. So the vocational pathways being strengthened for some of our young people. And we've often had students say, do you mean I could work here and care for our tonga, our iwi's tonga? Yes, you can. Um, they're learning about care through the gloves that you wear when you, you look after your, your tonga in the museum and things like that. So they're getting new ideas about that, new possibilities. It's providing access for students who don't normally access the learning, either with digital technologies, because a lot of the schools that we service are not able to afford the technologies that we have, and where we do use technologies, with the exception of our virtual reality kit and our robots, everything's open source and free. So if, if schools have access to computers, they've all got um, ultra-fast broadband, but not all schools have access to computers or devices to engage with. But where they do, they can access a lot of the tools that we use. Um, teachers are now starting to think about the museum and hopefully wider places as new ways of authentic learning experiences. So rather than just coming for the end of year bus trip into town to have a one hour program, which has sometimes happened for us here at Te Papa, they're thinking about ways in which they can use us. If they know they're studying a topic, how can they engage us to be able to help with them in new ways? Um, and we're really finding it strengthening student identity and self-esteem because of the way the program's designed, because we've got two facilitators, and often because the way in which we're working with students and everything's on an even playing field because we're working with new technologies, everybody's sort of created equal and suddenly teachers are reporting that they're seeing students in new light. And actually when I go back to the classroom, I know if I want so-and-so engaged, I can get the plaster scene out and get them crafting and they will sit and use that while listening and learning at the same time. So I'm going to show you some of our student work now. Uh, about two weeks ago, Waitangi Treaty Grounds opened up the Raranga Matehiko student exhibition that you can just see some of the images up there. Um, it's a really fantastic way to have student work across all four sites represented in a way. And many of the students whose work from Waitangi is up there came along to the opening and to see their pride on their faces that they actually had an exhibition and were showcasing work was quite something. 
Um, here you can see it's very hard sometimes to represent uh, digital work. Um, so you can see on the cubes there they've got QR codes that link through to students' scratch or coding projects that they've done. So one side of the box talks a little bit about what the student did and who they are. You link to the QR code and it takes you through to um, the work that they've done so you can see their programme designed. We also had the table down the middle has got a lot of uh, Google Cardboard sitting on it so you can actually go in and see the work that students have created in um, using virtual reality or other tools so you can put those on and each device has something different and then you've got the artwork around the wall including 3D designs that students have created using apps such as Tinkercad which is a 3D design software or Sculpt GL which is a carving tool. I'm just going to show you now, or let actually the students from Bay of Islands College talk to you. The piece that I'm going to show you is completely their work. So they've used a variety of apps, I think there's about eight different apps they've used, and they've each created individual work and brought it together in a whānui. Kia ora, I'm Ben. And I'm Kero. From my name at Bay of Islands College. And our class has been working on Kiwi culture. We have been creating this virtual world over the previous term and would like to share it with you. Here is Paris greeting you with the Karanga and some other students on the side, including our teacher, Fire and Net. Each student was given a task to create a tree, bush, hills or the marae. On the side, we have some more class members like myself, Mahi, Luke, Rehan, Faith, and Jaden. All of the photos of the people were taken on a green screen then moved into the virtual world. Going into the marae, each student has designed and made their own popo using a sculpting app and above each one is the student's pupa. All of the popo represents something that the student values or enjoys. We use software like Paint3D, SculptGL, TiltBrush, and Tinkercad to create the popo, trees, pepeha, marae and the film. Here's my popo. It has everything I value or enjoy like my family, my marae and my home. And here's my pepeha. It talks about my mountain, my rofa, my marae and my family. The main pole in the middle, called the Po Tokomonua, represents everyone in our class, so we all put something on it that symbolises us. The light effects are there to brighten up the marae and we're put in using tilt brush VR. The tahuhu is the backbone of our marae and holds it up. Everyone in our class now understands something about their culture, heritage and identity. I hope you enjoyed looking at our virtual whare, nō reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. So that was all created in a virtual world using Tilt Brush with many apps imported such as the Sculpt GL which allows students to be able to carve so they don't need to actually use wood and um, so they can carve and put their designs in after talking to the carving team at the Waitangi Treaty Grounds and then they can do their BPR using another app and rather than each have individual pieces of work it was brought together in one. So, and they, they can access it through uh, tilt brush or through um, virtual reality and they've got cardboards back in the classroom so they can walk around their whānui while they're in class as long as they've got a smartphone. But because not every class has that, we always do a movie recording like that and the students, um, in fact, they, they were Year 9 students so they did the movie recording themselves and did the voiceover as well. So just as I finish up, I'm going to play just a video of the Waitangi Treaty Ground exhibition and I've got a couple of minutes for questions if anyone wants to ask any questions about our program or the way in which our students are using digital technologies to engage in the museum context. So any questions on our program? Ah.
That's working. Yep. Okay, great. Now, on some of the tables, there's a couple of handouts that explain the program more in depth and some of the evaluation and quotes from people. Um, I didn't bring many copies. There's a couple more up the front, but I'll put my email address up shortly so you can email me through any questions if you'd like to ask anything. Um, anything about the ways in which we work. Kia ora. Um, I was just wondering how you see this developing in the future. I mean, is there a possibility of using digital resources from other institutions as well as the, the four key museums? Yeah, we would really like to expand the network. We think our partnership is what keeps us going and very strong. And so eventually we'd like to see this spread so that it's not just in four locations in the North Island, um, that it's in the South Island and that we can do it. Um, with other institutions, so not just museums, but we're looking at the broader glam sector, um, libraries and iwi as well. Um, but of course with this funding comes, so, but we're actively searching for that, but we would like to be able to build capability in each area so that once it's established, then that practice is there for each community to be able to own and to grow. Mm. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, thanks, Tara. That okay. was terrific. Very good. Thank you so much.